by popular demand, I'm going to discuss uh, a few issues that I'm seeing a lot in penetration tests, in my penetration tests uh, recently. So this has to do, or these have to do with authorization and business logic flaws. And my suspicion is that I keep finding these flaws because of the fact that they cannot be easily detected by automation or by different tools. Now I'm going to discuss a specific case here that um, has been uh, found, that I found in a penetration test uh, recently. Just uh, recently meaning earlier today. So I'm titling this video Finding Uncommon Bugs. So what we are dealing here with is that over here we have the administrator view. We have an application that actually has users with different levels of permission. And in this case, over here is the admin view and over here is the normal user view. Now, now the admin dashboard and I might have to actually show you a little bit better or to actually reflect the true reality of the application when it comes to the um, administrator view they had multiple panels here that they could access while the normal user could only access let's say two or three now in this case the administrator view uh, is different from the normal user view in the fact that the administrator can comment as you can see here can press a button and edit or add a comment to the user for example while the normal user here can only see the comments but not edit them so what was the issue here? So as I said, the app, it's an app with multiple user permissions. You have admin, you have normal user, you have an analyst, you have a marketing strategist and so on and so forth. Now, when after the initial, um, the user authenticates via user and password and it is being uh, given a JWT token, which is used for subsequent requests. Now, as I said, the comment, the ability to add comment is not present in users' view. So in this case, when the admin makes a comment, this is actually happening via a put request, right? As you can see here, I've made a screenshot of what actually happened in Burp. So as you can see, we have a put request to the API version one. And of course, I'm truncating a lot of information here. And how is this, what, what is the issue here? And that's exactly what I'm explaining below. Intercepting an admin's request in this case, this was the admin's request to edit comments and switching the token of the admin with the token of unprivileged user. So what I did in this case is that, as you can see, this is the normal user token, which has been uh, the original was the admin token. And I've replaced the admin token with the normal user token and allowed the request to finish. And lo and behold, it leads to a successful addition of the comment to the admin view. As you can see, the request finishes with HTTP 200. And as you can see, it's dated February 15, which is today. And I also did a screenshot in which it shows in the administrator panel. So as you can see, the administrator has the ability to edit comment and the comment has been successfully added, but the request has been forwarded with the normal user token. So in this case, we have an authorization issue. And lo and behold, 
that is a valid bug. Now, some key points or considerations to take away from this video, other than burp for the win, is that logic flaws, as I said previously, often escape automated testing and tools. Now, if you're someone who's actually doing a lot of manual testing, this is very beneficial to you because as a penetration tester, you'll still find a lot of issues. And I, for example, who is someone who's very in favor of automation, I may be flawed towards automation or I may be biased towards automation, but I do also love manual testing. So I might be doing a lot of automation when I write scripts and uh, scripts in Python and Bash, and I'm actually using those scripts when I'm uh, hunting or when I'm doing cybersecurity research, which is very rarely these days. These days, because I'm I'm getting a lot of penetration tests, and uh, I'd rather I'd prefer the stable flow of income from a penetration test instead of just I don't know maybe getting the frustration of hunting for I don't know how much time with only the promise of uh, maybe getting something in the end. So no, I'm actually more in favor of penetration tests. But like I said, I am flawed towards or biased towards automation, but I can see the benefit for the manual tester for the manual tester when it comes to using burp or actually doing secure code review. I love both worlds. It's interesting, but I actually do. Now, the second key point that I wanted to make is that oftentimes less rigorosity is uh, put, uh, pun intended here, on less common HTTP methods. So, if we look above, we can see we have a put request here. Now, Requests using methods such as put, patch, delete. Uh, just as a side note, with this uh, with this penetration test and with this web application, I found multiple issues when it came to delete requests. I found authorization issues when it came to delete requests. So, uh, like I said, I want to re-emphasize on the fact that less rigorosity is put when it. Uh, when it comes to less common HTTP methods such as put and patch and be sure to actually test them. Also, another key point is that every feature that leads to a request should be tested. Everything that involves a request, whatever input you have, whatever button you can click, whatever, I don't know, thing that you can interact with, in the application or in the asset that you're testing should be emphasized and should be analyzed from all perspectives as much as possible and i'm highlighting here especially when it comes to permissions so you can do the same thing that i did and you should actually do this when you're testing for authorization issues by switching tokens or whatever the authorization or the whatever the authorization method or tactic used in the asset that you're actually testing, you should try to have multiple users and switch between their ways of authentication to try to cross-reference or try to actually see if there is some sort of a permission. And as I said, I also want to re-emphasize on the fact that even though you're dealing with applications built on top of frameworks, when it comes to fine-grained permissions, I often see the issue that most of the application is quite secure, but you can still find some points that have issues when it comes to security.